Welcome back to Learn Electrics. In today's video, we will look at matching circuit breakers and fuses to cable sizes. And we'll look at one myth that has surrounded this topic amongst some electricians. A recent comment, and not the first time I've seen it, on an internet chat room went something like this. We wired a lighting circuit into a refurbished house. And as we only had 2.5 mm twin earth, and nothing smaller, we used the 2.5mm size. When the electrician came to sign the work off, he refused point blank to sign the work off. He said the cable size was too big. It should be 1mm or 1.5mm only, and what we had done was illegal. We've already plastered all the walls, and the ceiling is plastered, and to rip it all out and start again is going to cost hundreds of pounds. Is the electrician right? Is 1.5 millimetres the legal maximum for lighting circuits? Well, here is my reply. Rubbish. A load of old tosh. There is no maximum cable size. So, just what is the law? The law for electricians comes from three important sources. The Health and Safety at Work Act, the Electricity at Work Regulations, and the building regulations, and we must comply with their requirements. But they do not suggest any sizes for cables at all. No maximum sizes, no minimum sizes, nothing. BS 7671 wiring regulations, and we are working to the 18th edition at the moment, are not law, but they are written to help us to work to the law. The wiring regulations suggest minimum sizes for cables but they do not mention maximum sizes. The electricity work regulations and the building regulations require us to choose conductor sizes that are adequate for the anticipated loads and adequate for the prospective fault currents. We must also choose the correct size fuses or circuit breakers to protect the occupants from danger whilst allowing adequate current to flow for the connected appliances and for the equipment to function correctly. In other words, the breaker must be big enough that the kettle works, but not so big that it never trips when there is a fault. Shown here is an important equation on selecting cable sizes. Very simply, reading from left to right, it says the design current IB must not be more than the fuse rating IN and the fuse rating IN must not be more than the conductor rating IZ. This means that the cable size, the conductor cross-sectional area, must be able to carry at least the current rating of the fuse or circuit breaker. The fuse or breaker is not there to protect the appliance. The fuse protects the conductor. The conductor should always be the strongest part of the circuit. A bigger conductor size can be used but never a smaller size. So let's work through the process of selecting a cable size. Always decide on the breaker size before selecting the cable size. In this video, we will just concentrate on twin and earth cable and domestic applications. But each cable type will have its own data pages and will work in a similar way. Begin by looking at page 409 in the wiring regulations where we will find table 4D5 for twin and earth. This table lists the conductor size in the leftmost column and most of the remaining columns indicate the maximum current permitted for the size of cable according to the installation conditions that are listed at the top of each column. Let me demonstrate this. Imagine you have a 9 kilowatt shower to fit. How are you to decide the minimum size cable to install? Using the power triangle, we calculate that this 9 kilowatt shower draws 39 amps of current and we decide to protect it with a 40 amp circuit breaker. The cable passes through the loft space above the ceiling where it is covered by loft insulation that is 100 millimeters thick, which is reference method 100 on page 409. Trace down the column and find a number that is equal to or greater than 40 amps. The rating of the breaker. Move to the leftmost column where the conductor size will be shown, in this case 
10 millimeters. We must choose 10 millimeter twin and earth cable. Now let's have a look at choosing a cable size for a lighting circuit. First, we will need to find the amps. Keeping this simple, we begin by adding up all the lamp holders and ceiling roses on the lighting circuit. Then we make the assumption that all bayonet type lamp holders are 100 watt rating, even if they only have 60 watt lamps in them. This is because someone could easily remove the 60 watt lamp and replace it with a 100 watt lamp. Multiply the number of lamps by 100 and divide by 230 to find the amps. In our example, we have eight lamp holders. Multiply by 100 gives 800 watts. Divide 800 by 230 volts and we have 3.48 amps of current. We may choose to round this up to four amps, but in any case, we would choose a six amp breaker. And we will apply reference method 100 again as the cable passes through the insulated ceiling. Back to page 409, find the column for reference method 100. Trace down the column, looking for a number equal to or greater than six amps. Move to the leftmost column, and there we find the minimum cable size, one millimeter. We should choose one millimeter twin and earth for this lighting circuit. And lastly, let's look at a cooker circuit. We have a seven kilowatt cooker and a power law calculation tells us that the cooker draws 30 amps of current. It is protected by a 32 amp circuit breaker and the cable passes through a stud wall. And for this example, we will use reference method 102. Trace down the column for method 102 until we find the number 35. This is greater than 32 amps. Perfect. Move to the leftmost column where we find the cable to choose is six millimeters. Our cooker should be installed on six millimeter twin and earth. The three examples here have all assumed very simple situations, which will cover the majority of domestic installations. We have not taken into account cable grouping, increased ambient temperature, etc., which are part of under the video. Lastly, we will look at a couple of tables that may help when choosing cables and breakers on site. These tables have been kept simple and are for guidance only, but they do make a good starting point. This table shows a range of breaker and fuse sizes. Then it shows the maximum kilowatt rating for each circuit using that size device. And then the minimum cable size to be selected. Remember, you may still need to consider other factors when choosing sizes. 10 slash four here indicates that the phase and neutral conductors are 10 millimeters and the earth is four millimeters and so on for other cable sizes. Remember, there is no maximum cable size. The only limitation on cable size is, will it fit into the switches and sockets? And who is paying for the extra copper? This table, again for guidance only, shows a range of typical appliances and the circuit breaker size that should be fitted. And the maximum cable length in meters to not exceed voltage drop requirements. Lighting, is always assumed to be evenly distributed around the circuit. In summary, there is a stated minimum size or cross-sectional area for conductors, but there is no stated maximum CSA or size. The equation IB, IN, IZ tells us that for the appliance to function correctly, the fuse rating IN should be equal to or bigger than the design current IB of the appliance. And for the conductor, the cable, to not suffer thermal damage, the rating of the conductor, IZ, should be greater than the rating of the fuse or breaker, IN. What we say is, the conductor or cable rating should always be the strongest part of the circuit so that the circuit breaker will operate before the cable is damaged. And there we have it. My advice is to practice working out breaker sizes and cable sizes the more that you practice, the more familiar that you will become with page 409 and the adjacent tables, and the better you will become at choosing cable sizes. Good luck and stick with it. We hope that you found this video from Learn Electrics both useful and enjoyable, and that you have added some more knowledge to your mental toolbox. By clicking on subscribe below, 
you will have access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you will also ensure that you don't miss our next video. Clicking on subscribe also helps us too and we do appreciate that small act. It does make us feel that our efforts are worthwhile. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all the videos. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.